Do you ever wish you could have a life do-over, similar to a makeover or a house renovation? A chance to try something again with a different result? Try Again with Monique is a place where I will give you my take and also hear from you regarding the questions and challenges we all face in life. You will either be inspired to try life again, over and over again, or make some really good lemonade from those sour lemons. Either way, I got you. If at first you don't succeed, try again with Monique. So last week I talked about joy and how it can uplift us personally as well as other people. Please go back and listen to episode 37 if you haven't already done so. I I believe it'll help you find joy in your life. Today I want to talk about love, particularly self-love, or as some say, loving yourself. So what does it mean to love yourself? Self-love is sometimes defined as having an appreciation for one's own worth or value. It is also paying sufficient attention to one's own happiness and well-being. Self-love is closely uh, related to self-worth, self-esteem, self-compassion, and self-confidence. However, if we aren't careful and and balanced when practicing self-love, we can end up on the wrong or negative side of it. Some examples of inappropriate or unbalanced expression of self-love are you know, excessive pride or vanity, self-conceit, narcissism, and pride. So how do we stay on the right side of self-love and practice it in balanced and healthy ways? I believe we can accomplish this by keeping our lives in, in proper perspective. You know, you're a person made by God and therefore important, purposeful, and worthy of love. But so are the other 7 billion people on the planet. I, I think if we can keep in the forefront of our minds that God, who is no respecter of persons, loves us all and deems us equally important, then we won't get so caught up in ourselves by practicing self-love in an extreme or narcissistic way. The key is balance, taking care of yourself with a proper perspective and with the understanding that though you are important, it's not all about you. The world was never designed to center around one person or even a few people. Rather, self-love is about having a healthy view of yourself and treating others, uh, treating yourself rather the way you want others to treat you while simultaneously creating capacity for loving and interacting with others properly. Because you can't give what you don't have. If you can't love yourself, you're going to struggle with loving other people, guaranteed. This is true, as oftentimes other people are a mirror of us or what we need to work on or because we're all interconnected and many times we're both intertwined and interconnected. You know, they tell you in in an airplane crisis moment to put the oxygen mask on yourself first before attempting to help someone else. This is uh, particularly for, you know, groups like parents. Uh, The concept is if you run out of oxygen, then you can't help someone else get some. If you don't have any water, you can't offer someone else a drink. Also, if you're dehydrated, you need the water for yourself and you can't help quench someone else's thirst. Self-love operates the same way. If you don't love yourself in a healthy way, then you don't have the capacity to love other people properly. The Bible says that we should love our neighbors as ourselves. You know, since I was a little girl, um, that scripture, love our neighbors as our, our ourselves, really intrigued me and sometimes bothered me even because I couldn't grasp, you know, the concept of self-love. I grew up in a broken home and did not have the best or the closest relationship with my father for most of my life. My, my beautiful mother did her very best, but she, like so many other single parents, can't really make up for or completely make up for that absent parent or feel their void. My, my father being absent and uh, inactive affected so many aspects of my life, you know, dating, believing that I was worthy of healthy love, and even my ability to see God as good. And as a father, I bet some of you know what I'm talking about. Um, God is a good father, but your first introduction to a father is your earthly one. And if that didn't go well, you may have a hard time, like I did, believing that a heavenly father can do or be any better. You know, I was blessed to have many people in my life help me overcome that void, that that father void. A few, you know, honorable mentions are my grandfather who raised me very well, pastors who mentored me and saw things in me I didn't even see in myself, you know, my brother who has always looked out for me, and my husband of, of 26 years who, who loves me well and is very patient with me and with my growth process. 
God allowing those people to enter my life and to help fill that father void allowed me to reconcile briefly with my physical father before he left this earth. And it convinced me that God really is a father, that God is a good father, that he's a consistent father, that he is one who will never leave you or forsake you. I've clung many days to the scripture that says when your mother and father forsake you, the Lord will take care of you. I have found that scripture to be 100% true. And my prayer for you today is if there's anything in your life story that is hindering you from loving yourself or from, or from regarding yourself in a healthy way, in a way that God made you, which, you know, is in his image and he calls you fearfully and wonderfully made. If there's anything hindering that, I pray that today's message will somehow encourage you to start practicing self-love or, or that God would send people to you like he did for me to show you that you are in fact worthy of loving yourself and of being loved by other people. But you have to remember the pathway to loving others begins with you first loving yourself. So let's talk about some practical ways that you can show love to yourself. Uh, Number one, get to know yourself. So many people don't know who they are. They don't know what they believe. They don't know what they like or dislike, what they even want out of life. Don't be afraid to be alone and find out what you like and what you don't like. Just just like you get to know other people when you meet them or when you are, are establishing a relationship, get to know yourself. Don't live your life not knowing who you are because knowing who you are means you show up in the world authentically. And by doing that, you cause others to love you for who you really are, not who you pretend to be or who others want you to be. So I, I say the first um, thing you should do is, is get to know yourself. Uh, number two, I, I recommend daily affirmations. You know, self-talk matters. How you talk to yourself will determine your actions. It'll determine your choices. And your actions and your choices will determine the direction of your life. So speak positive positively to yourself. Uh, you know, don't lie to yourself, but encourage yourself every day. Tell yourself you're lovable and capable of loving others. You know, I try to remind myself every day of the scripture that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That helps me, helps me so much um, every day. You know, there was a skit on um, Saturday, Saturday Night Live where a character, uh, I believe his name was Stuart Smalley or something like that. He used to always end his, his segment looking in the mirror saying, I'm good enough, I'm smart enough, and doggone it, people like me. And that is really what we have to do. It's, it's funny, but it's true. You believe what you say about yourself, especially if you keep what you say on repeat. So number three, uh, you know, in terms of having self-love, you should have boundaries. I, I've learned that you almost can't have any healthy relationship without clear and executable boundaries. Boundaries really teach you and they teach others how you want to be treated. You, you know, you should have boundaries that really cover the gamut of your life, your spiritual, relational, uh, physical, emotional, and so on. One example, you know, of a physical boundary is not feeding your body junk because you, you know, have a goal of being healthy and strong. Um, There's an expression that boundaries show people where the door is. It doesn't kick them out of the door. It just points them to its location. There's another expression that good fences make good neighbors. Remember that scripture that said, love your neighbor as yourself. Number four, in terms of self-love, I believe you have to forgive yourself. If you mess up, that means you're human. Nothing more, nothing less. Get the lesson and move on. Don't hang your head down walking around in condemnation and guilt and all that stuff that really is a hindrance to you moving forward and, and to regarding yourself in a healthy way. Don't just forgive other people. Forgive yourself. Hopefully by now you, you understand that love is not just a, it's not a fuzzy feeling. It's not a holiday. It's not a nice concept. It's a powerful force that can change people and, and it can change circumstances. The Bible says love covers a multitude of sins and that it never fails. Uh, it describes love as being patient, as being kind. It says love doesn't envy, it doesn't boast, it is not proud, it does not dishonor others, it's not self-seeking, it's not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, it always trusts, it always hopes, it always perseveres, and love never fails. Now just imagine if we loved ourselves and we loved one another, according to that scripture, we really could change the world. 
Furthermore, God is love. He's the very embodiment of love and you're made in his image. So he wants you to love yourself as well. God, you know, God loved the world so much. He sacrificed his only son so that we wouldn't have to make any sacrifices to have eternal life. Jesus made the sacrifice for us. Love is also a fruit of the spirit, which is one of nine qualities that should be evident in the lives of followers of Jesus Christ. And in closing, I want to share uh, two quotes about self-love. And the first is, give yourself the same care and attention that you give to others and watch yourself bloom. Uh, Next, loving yourself starts with liking yourself, which starts with respecting yourself, which starts with thinking of yourself in positive ways. I encourage you to think of or even write down at least two ways that you plan to show yourself love this week and going forward. Remember, charity begins at home. So let healthy love start with you. Bye for now. Thank you for taking the time to listen to Try Again with Monique. If you enjoyed today's episode, please take a moment to leave a review wherever you are listening. Please also remember to hit the subscribe button so you can be notified when new episodes are available. New episodes will be posted weekly. Please also like and follow us on Facebook. Try Again with Monique is a production of GM Associates released under Creative Common Attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives, 4.0 international license. Remember, if at first you don't succeed, try again with Monique.